Hello and welcome to WMLT News. I'm Courtney Van Adder. Three arrests have been made in connection to the burglaries that took place in Great Springs and Lake St Stevens. Christopher Coburn was a person of interest in the robbery since October 10th and was arrested on felony charges for the transfer of stolen property. Raleigh County Sheriff Steve Tanner says Coburn is believed to be more involved than the charges reflect. Coburn is suspected to be involved in the burglaries that have taken place in Raleigh, Fayette, and Mercer counties. World War II veteran Frank Tanabe is in the final stages of inoperable liver cancer and is currently receiving hospice care surrounded by his wife and children in Honolulu, Hawaii. He is among a group of Japanese Americans who were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal as part of the Military Intelligence Service Unit during World War II. Tanabe, 93, has always worked hard for his nation as in a true patriot. He casted what was likely his final vote in the presidential election this past week. As Election Day nears, Tanabe says it is very important to vote because he saw his comrades' arms fight and die for American rights. Early voting ends November 3rd for West Virginia residents. Election Day is Tuesday, November 6th. Representatives from Senator Manchin's office and the Veterans Administration, or VA, met with area veterans and their dependents at the Raleigh County Public Library in Beckley this month. The Beckley meeting was once of a series of round tables designed to address concerns about medical care. It was also meant to inform veterans about new programs. About a dozen veterans showed up to meet with the VA representatives and get one-on-one -on -one assistance with any issues they were having with their services. Some asked about appeals for compensation, financial eligibility for services, and treatment for age or orange exposure. Patricia Piercy's husband is a Vietnam veteran and she says the meeting helped the to ease some of her concerns. Officials with Senator Manchin's office say they hope to continue outreach meetings like this to improve communication and services for West Virginia veterans. The Concord University Wingman is the newest addition to the veterans program at the school. At West, as West McKinney reports, it's another way the school hopes to welcome veterans. The Concord University Veterans Program wants to improve accountability among veterans. The Wingman Initiative is meant to help former service men and women find their way around campus by connecting military students. The idea is to train veterans to serve as counselors of sort. If one is in trouble or having a hard time, they can turn to another veteran for help. Noble says the most important concept of Wingman is helping veterans with traumatic flashbacks. Concord Veterans Advocate Dave Moore says Wingman is just another way to provide services to veterans. Noble and Moore say it's programs like these that create a necessary comfort level for military and keep them in school. For WMLT News, I'm Wes McKinney in Athens. Robbie Peters, a student at Concord University, is setting new Weaviac records one week at a time. Wes McKinney has more. Over the course of my career, I've been able to progressively increase the, the volume of mileage depending on what I've been capable of doing and what I get used to as I go on it becomes easier but um, over the summer and for most of this season I've had back to back to back weeks consecutive weeks at around 95 miles it's been a big learning experience over the over the many years every year I feel like I pick up more and more and I realize certain things that I didn't know before and I do owe a lot to coach Cox you know I, we've had a lot of conversations we will be run out I'll be asking them questions you know like uh, what do you think about this what what if I um, in incorporated this into my training and 
see how he's he's improved, you know, just dramatically over over the time and all the hard work and dedication that he's put in. Um, you know, it, it's it's a joy. You know, I mean, he he's he's worked extremely hard, and and to see that uh, you know paying off and, and coming to a point here as you know as a fifth year senior, it's uh, it's very exciting. It's great. It's you know just even lead by example. You know if 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 you're a runner and you don't want to be that good, then there's something wrong. You know. I mean so you know hopefully everybody's going to keep. And that's been our whole you know focus here is try to get as close to you know Robbie as we can with with you know at least four more guys. I have a, I've had a few major goals in mind for this season winning conference individually and as a team and going to nationals but um you know s similarly to how in high school it, it took me four years of um you know near successes but failures to finally win a state title i think i view it in a similar light as it would be my sort of culminating crowning achievement for my collegiate career so it, it would be a dream come true Concord always encourages alumni to visit campus. Either for homecoming or other Concord events, alumni still is an important part of the campus. To honor past graduates, Concord hosted a career fair featuring su successful alumni. After being established in 1872, it has made way for many successful people. Concord's most popular programs are business, education, liberal arts, social science, and biology. Callaway, one of Concord's alum, came back to participate in the homecoming festivities. Callaway told us more about his successful experiences after graduating from Concord. Leaving Concord College, and I went into broadcasting and education, worked for several radio stations, the ones most notable, probably WJLS and Beckley. I also worked with Ray Hall Communications as their news director. Also during that period of time, served as the uh, president of the West Virginia Associated Press Broadcasters Association. And as part of the teaching career, I was also president of the West Virginia Vocational Education Association. After serving in terms of the various radio stations throughout Southern West Virginia, moved to Charleston, West Virginia, where I purchased a radio station. WMLT will return after this short break. The Concord University chapter of Ta Kappa Epsilon fraternity kicked off what they dubbed as Pink Week on Monday as part of their chapter's philanthropy initiatives. Members of the chapter will be celebrating those who have fought the disease and fundraising continues through the week. Scott Noble has more. Members of Tau Kappa Epsilon converged on the Jerry Beasley Student Center wearing commemorative pink letters on white t-shirts to show support in the fight against breast cancer. Some went even further by wearing other pink items of clothing and accessories. Chapter President Jonathan Testerman says he's happy with the way things got started. I mean, this is like the biggest one we've taken on this year. So, I mean, it's definitely good for, uh, for us to get our name out there and obviously for breast cancer awareness. The group sold items such as bracelets and stickers. They handed out brochures that told people how to join in the fight. Najee Baker, one of the newer members of the fraternity, shared his thoughts on the drive and his early impressions of Greek life. The Teeks collected more than $200 in the first day alone. They say all proceeds will go to research and care of the American Cancer Society. For WMLT News, I'm Scott Noble from Athens. This past weekend marked another Oktoberfest in Bramwell. Scott Noble has more. The brisk weather did little to dampen the festivities of this year's Oktoberfest in Bramwell. The guests were treated to beers from across the country, authentic German food and musical acts at four different venues. Bluefield resident Tony Zobo. This is my fourth Oktoberfest. And what keeps you coming back? Well, frankly, this is the best local event that is put on in the entire area. The food, the beer, the people, the music, it's, it, you can't get this anywhere else. This is the best event going on. 
Joe Bear traveled from Roanoke to attend the festival and says his first impression is a pretty good one. Longtime residents look forward to the annual fair, which dramatically swells the tiny town's population. Donald Hall says he welcomes Branwell's yearly influx of beer lovers. The event concluded with an award ceremony for best brew and a performance by local favorites, the Boatman. For WMLT News, I'm Scott Noble in Brandon. This year, festival director Scott Hill brought the annual Rocket Boy Festival to Beckley, West Virginia for the first time. The festival normally held in Colwood, West Virginia, celebrates Homer Hickam, author of The Rocket Boys, life growing up in a small coal town. The festival brought together church choirs who received money for their food pantries. Homer Hickam was on hand to sign autographs and take pictures with fans. Since the festival took place at the Beckley Exhibition Coal Mine, it gave visitors the opportunity to enter a once working mine. Visitors were even treated to music from the show Rocket Boys the Musical, which plays every summer throughout the theater, West Virginia. When asked how he thought the festival would go, Mr. Hickam had this to say. Hinton, West Virginia brings the old and the new together with their annual Railroad Days. Bailey Galipsy has more on this Hinton tradition. Railroad Days chugs along the Summers County seat for two weekends every October. The town celebrates the history as well as the natural beauty of railroads. Hinton Railroads were built as a divisional terminal in 1905, but now run as a full functioning railroad station. To celebrate the success, the small town brings in vendors, crafts, and live music every year for the past 30 years to keep the railroad support going. Member of Railroad Days Committee, Dorothy Jean Boley, was able to shine a little more light on this event. Boley says this event runs deep within the town's history. During Railroad Days, the New River train arrives each day in the afternoon, offering travel and the opportunity to see the trains at work. The train station has developed over the years to offer travel to bigger cities, such as Charleston and Washington, D.C., along with other locations. Premium Supervisor David Webb told of how this train station, along with Hinton Railroad Days, funds all of this small town's needs for the entire year. Railroad Days brings to the community a look into the past that helped bring about this small town. It is a time for them to celebrate their history, as well as bond with new and old friends. For WMLT News, I'm Bailey Gillespie in Hinton. This has been WMLT News from Concord University. Tune in again in two weeks. What? Sorry. Don't know what to tell you. I'm only human. Can I ask you again to accept?